progress is being made within the hearts and minds of those who are reading these messages. By progress we mean there is a shift within the consciousness that is reflected within the holographic activity that is you. In other words, the thoughts that each of you are is thinking and acting within itself. Your psychologist and your psychiatrist would say there's a shift in the data stored within your subconscious. The prayer given previously, I am a human becoming, help me to become, is powerful enough that simply reading it and considering it with a positive attitude begins the shift. The victim attitude is deeply ingrained within humanity as a whole. It shuts down the light of each child as soon as it is absorbed from the parental attitude. With the realization that victimhood is a falsehood and the idea be released, the holographic pattern immediately begins to brighten. Use it as a mantra, especially when encountering situations that have in the past triggered what have been referred to as giving away your power. These can be encounters with other people or other life situations resulting from inappropriate decisions. The prayer wording allows a shift in attitude that reflects an intention to taking back that power. As it is practiced on a small scale within each individual life, then it becomes a tiny grain of sand in the mass consciousness that grows as others receive and begin to use this simple thought in their daily lives. It might be appropriate to define mantra. It's a short series of sounds or words that bring upon balance within what you call the subconscious awareness. Often the sounds are from ancient languages that are not consciously understood, but resonate at the DNA RNA level of the body, bringing up a change in an outward flowing manner. The mantra as currently used is often an intuitive decision on the part of one person assigning it to another. Frequently the appropriate combination is not giving in years of repetition brings little if any change. Some choose on their own with the same result. The use of the simple prayer, I am the human becoming, help me to become, guarantees results. The most benefit is gained not by setting aside a period and using continuous repetition, but by single statements made in connection with conscious recognition of thoughts, encounters, or situations that are bringing forth your victim response. Remembering and thinking it several times during the day is also very helpful. You each have victim responses, and there are no exceptions. You simply deny you do in order to deny that you give away your power to an ego that does not. Denial is the shield of the empowered ego that fosters victimhood as a result. This prayer will end the deification of the ego. Ego is a function, not a false. Thou shalt have no gods before me. The number one false god is the falsely enthroned ego that you have been programmed to struggle against. A number of commonly used quotes are appropriate. That which you resist, persist. That which you fear shall come upon you, and so forth. You have been programmed to turn everywhere but inward in self-contemplation. That results in self-employment that in turn flows outward into expansive expression. Self-contemplation is not sitting and staring at your navel wondering who, what, and where am I. It is practicing the use of the universal laws and contemplating the result of the applications in experience for the purpose of self-enlightenment. Each experience is a pebble in the pond of your life. You are not so friendly, not so, so I've added other layers of programming very effectively. You must not look inward or empower the self because that is selfish. You are then guilty if you consider empowering the self because it is then implied that you will use the power to overcome others. This results in distortion through misinterpretation early in childhood that each attempts to establish their innate tendencies to follow what gives them joy into greater expression. The distortion spread into countless intermingling and interacting complicated behavior patterns that pass from one generation to the other. The simple use of the prayer or mantra frequently within family and group situations by the participating members would bring dramatic changes. The wide use of it wisely would have phenomenal results. The point of this segment of information is not a sermon, but instead to illustrate how a statement of simplicity and appeal can bring forth change in a way that resolves and literally dissolves the intermingled and interrelated distorted patterns of experience. If you doubt this, use a small prayer and observe what happens. The more you use it appropriately, wisely, the greater demonstration you will observe. Following the first remembering uses of it, you will find yourself using it silently in situations as simple as being irritated because the waitress is slow. It changes your experience, which in turn changes hers. There will be big irritations that will slip by, and later when remembered these and the most appropriate times to say is with meaning. 
in emotion. It works. It would seem that this series of messages could perhaps have been condensed down into a few simple statements that would be as effective as a small prayer. Perhaps, but would you have heard them? And observing human tendencies, especially ones with media overwhelm and information clutter, it's a matter of chipping away at an established pattern of the read and toss syndrome. Most who are awakened to the reality of the situation surrounding you are avid readers and listeners with this syndrome deeply patterned. The media overwhelm consists of constant repetition plainly presented and supported by subliminal keywords and phrases. This places a shield of resistance at the subconscious level that then accepts subliminal messages like arrows penetrating a target. These messages have had to slowly penetrate this shield using repetition and realizations of truth as our arrows to penetrate the shield and to cause the places in the shield to open so that the messages could be absorbed in rereading of the same version but understood in a new light. Greater clarity and greater clarity, particularly two statements, should augment this opening process. This doesn't indicate that your shield attempting to protect you from the media barrage is weakened. Instead, it's strengthened. The greater realization of the bigger picture of both aspects of your surrounding situation allows for conscious sifting of all the information you're inputting. The realizations of truth and your sincere commitment to the project have rearranged the content of the subconscious in a way similar to programs used to computer files can be rearranged, allowing the disk space to be used in the most efficient configuration. This will be reflected in your life experience. There may be some confusion, especially during your sleep patterns, as this reconfiguration of your subconscious actually happens. For the most self-aware, it will be more pronounced and for a time even troublesome. This process will allow you to absorb important contents of the messages into a format of both levels of consciousness. It's like entering two interacting programs on a computer, something like Word overlaying Windows, both contributing to a greater practical application available to the user. How well it works depends on how well the user learns and applies its available unique applications. This is an apt analogy for careful consideration by serious users intending to take advantage of the opportunity to shortcut older methods of grubbing it out. There are many levels involved in the process of bringing forth the accelerated changes in the consciousness of Earth inhabitants, planetary awareness. The focus of the mass consciousness at the individual level is outward in contemplation of the deliberate teaching that the Creator's personality somewhere beyond the sky and the heavens make an arbitrary judgment about whether the victim prayers deserved answering is a picture of the structure inherent with the aberrant plants being carried out all around you. It's constrictive in its focus, the opposite of expansion creation that maintains itself through an over-unity mode, meaning the flow brings forth an exponential increase in the energy beyond what is focused in the manifestation. This results to the inverse movement of the self-contemplative focus which is within the intentional manifestation or the action of the second universal law. It can then be likened to be there being two sides of a coin. Through the intention of creation manifestation there is the result of the manifestation and then the contemplation or experiencing of this process which is the self-contemplating as of the experiences. That involves the five senses, ego observation, and the contemplative thought process. Ideally, all this moves through the individual life experience and flow. This is not to say that each individual would always create positive experiences. However, if the process was understood at the subconscious level, then the effects of an inappropriately caused experience would be contemplated. Through the necessary adjustments of attitude and intention, a lesson would be learned and the overall experience pattern continued with little trauma, greater wisdom gained, and further upliftment of the energy vibration. Through consideration of the ideal, it is easy to conclude that the planned reversal of this flow to create an opposite inclusive flow would end in something like your scientist theory of the black hole, absorbing all the available energies into a compacted mass. Why then have all the planners not figured out the greater picture of the inevitable end of their endeavor? The enthroned ego with the addiction to power and control is seldom able to perceive logically. You perceive this type of distortion as insanity because of an individual's inability to follow the logical norm of the societal group. Sometimes it is because the creative thought process is far beyond the societal norm and sometimes it is ruled by distorted ability to perceive. This is both can learn behavior through controlled indoctrination 
interchange between the present generations and those following. The particular group holding our interest promotes longevity and positively believes in reincarnation. Each of the hierarchies programmed at birth through magical methods to believe that they are reincarnation through a long line of predecessors all committed to this project. Each generation has then proceeded as being more empowered than the last. In this way, their project has continued on what you experience on the eons of time towards this important pivotal point. This project, which deviates so far from the accepted norm, has come into form through the use of the first two laws of the universe of attraction and focused intent. However, it's not possible for them to move out of the flow of expansive energy in a relaxed mode. The law of allowance is ignored. The only way for balance to be maintained is through the rigid control of all aspects by planning and executing every detail to dovetail within their overall plan. Deviations are detected as quickly as possible and all haste is taken to remedy the situation by any means possible in the belief that the end justifies the means. This overview of the pattern of their plan does pattern of their plan does not indicate that it is Earth and its inhabitants are firmly within the grip of its influences and the situation must be intentionally resolved. It is beyond the point that containment would be appropriate while the inhabitants figure the rollout. The control being exerted outweighs the possibility of this taking place without focused assistance. The focused assistance is manifesting into the heart of their game in the form of the Project New Paradigm with its multifaceted application of all four laws. You must contemplate the inside-out process concurrent with the outside-in process through the nuances of previously explained facets of creative flow to arrive at a picture of the game board. You will then be able to choose intelligently to join the play or not. The play will be interesting to follow. One focus of the play will be intense and controlled, giving forth an aura of a determined restraint, planning and examining every move. The other relaxed, allowing each play to be drawn to the wisdom of thought, thinking resulting in calm game moves, each flowing into the next into an expansive mode. The adversary considers that each play represents a shift necessary before another play can be conceptualized and focused in a manifestation within the application supplied by the use of two universal laws as self-governing factor. The balance is perceived by them as established control. Since their focus is restricted to using only two laws, using the third in an opposite mode makes the fourth impossible to attain. In other words, within our analogy, they're playing with only half a deck. There are slang references to insanity as playing with only half a deck. That's quite appropriate. There have been frequent uses of analogies within these messages, each to illustrate the understanding of two areas, the reintroduction of the universal laws, and an overview of the game strategies in simple terms. We have attempted to add dimension to those understandings within succeeding messages. As you assemble these bits of information into blocks of understanding, you enhance your ability to contribute to the project. Commitment and resolve garner confidence in your day-to-day -day experience as you attract opportunities to participate. This releases the need to react towards the program individuals caught up in the negative focus and brings allowance into your experience. You know how the game is being played and can now perceive that you have the choice to participate intelligently, resulting in a new sense of balance through purpose. Through returning to familiar expansive expression, your sense of well-being becomes magnetic and radiant. You are beginning the transcendent process. The creative process takes advantage of every opportunity to continue its expansive mode. Your heart welcomes this wondrous opportunity and adds the dimension of emotion to the thinking level, bringing forth outward dimensional expansion. This is how it works. There was a time that mankind experiencing on this planet brought all into balance. It was an experience that set what you might term the ideal in the consciousness at the planetary level. This an established ability to recognize imbalance and allow for the desire to return to that ideal. This realization of what is and is not balanced experience comes from deep within the awareness. The singularity of focus is the controlling factor allowing the planet to remain within the orbital pattern of the solar system. What is perceived as gravity as it relates to the magnetism of the planet does not apply to the planets as they orbit within the solar system. This is a higher application of the law of attraction, or like being attract alike. When there are similar criteria involved in the creative focus that brings the system into manifestation, that similarity is the basis for remaining within the field of focus.
Inasmuch as there is natural over unity flows of energy accumulated, the system continues to expand and additional planets are formed. The process involved is not the point. Only that you grasp the understanding that your scientists cannot understand what is at the basis of all manifested creation without understanding the basic laws of the universe and the principles of thought thinking and acting upon itself independent of control. Once this basis is accepted, then the door to understanding is open. It was never meant for man to gaze and wonder at what surrounds him, but that he should understand. The human brain is but a radio receiver that is capable of tuning into the flow of knowledge ever present in the creative flow. The magnetic field surrounding each of you is like an antenna, but your acquired belief systems cause you to unplug from the universal station and instead plug only into the five sensual environment. The spiritual aspect of the human, the God aspect of self-awareness, is unknown to you through the stressed importance of material manifestation and the distorted influence of your religions. The adventure you search in vain to find is found in exploring the journey of the spirit that you are into manifesting experience and in finding its every expansive return trip. This explains why each goal attained is never enough and more and more must be attempted or lapsed into discouragement and plan instead for a trip to the city of Golden Streets to take up playing the harp on the local cloud. Humanity as it knows itself on planet Earth at this moment is experiencing the degree of utter frustration that is incredible indeed. This can be compared to a balloon filling at an exponential rate toward the explosive point. The master planners of control are watching for this bursting point and planning the expansion with what they believe to be great care. However, just as the balloons from the same package burst at different air pressure levels, neither can they be sure what the exact bursting point may be. It's a matter of how this released energy is directed that is the important point. Will it be as they choose, or can it be self-directed by the mass consciousness of the awareness inside that bubble? Could the energy within the bubble be redirected from frustration to creation and deflate the balloon? They have no contingency plan to deal with these possibilities. It only requires one small hole in the dike to destroy the dam. Several or even many small holes ensure and speed the process. Why not one big explosion? Allowing weak points to expand is within the expansive flow of creation, while deliberate destruction is not. Considering possibilities within your own life experience is self-contemplation, again with the expansive flow of experience. Does the focus of applying the law of attraction and deliberate manifestation of this opportunity for the weakness in their plans to expand include the destruction of the ones who would enslave it or end your earthly experience by their choice? It is suggested to consciously withdraw participation by focusing instead on an entirely different creation project that will simply transcend the planned disaster. This would leave the perpetrators holding the bag and experiencing the other side of the coin. That fits into the experience of the law of attraction. To their own use of it, this would be a wonderful demonstration of the universal laws and concept and application. Conceptualization of the simple changes in how a situation is perceived and using a change of focus of intention, applying the universal laws that have brought forth the wholeness of manifested reality is a big stretch of your understanding of how things really are. When you re-read this material or re-listen to it, ask for the spiritual aspect, the source of your manifestation into life experience to give you discernment. Ask to know if this material contains truth and what are the applications of these truths that will serve you, your fellow inhabitants, and the planet. It is your right to know if this is guidance or trash. Ask and it shall be given unto you. This statement was not given to bring you material things directly, but that you might receive knowledge or information to be experienced into wisdom. It's appropriate to continue to paraphrase, unto those much will be given, and from them much will be expected. When understanding is giving, you are expected to apply the laws and to live within them in ever-expanding application and further understanding. Ignorance is no excuse before the law. The laws work whether you understand them or not. Intelligent, intentional application is the best bet for an adventure that will keep you delightfully occupied, depending on your ability to overcome your own experiences and see them in context. Attitude does determine your altitude. There are many puzzle pieces within these lessons that will be assembled by each serious endeavor to do so. Amazingly, these complete puzzles will each be a unique piece that will fit into the puzzle at the next level. You exist within a dimensional whole. 
Even the pieces are dimensional rather than flat. A necessary shift in how you conceptualize is available as a stepping stone for greater understanding. When you add dimension and life, which is thought thinking, to the game board, it lights up. To your imagination, you can begin to perceive movement within flow. Nothing is lifeless or stagnant. Every quark, atom, and molecule is pulsing with thought and movement. Nothing is truly flat or solid. You cannot walk through walls in your manifested body at the density of 68 megahertz or less. This should not be mystery. When your brain vibration is 90 megahertz or less, you are unable to tune your radio-like brain to the universal flow and receive the keys of the mysteries of the galactic intentional focus. The possibilities of adventures leading to these experiences are encompassed within these lessons. Not all is directly presented, for much is there to be contemplated and greater understandings brought forth through the personal unique process. Within the Creator's flow, all uniqueness is divergent and cohesive. Two sides of the coin, or it should be that a visualization of something that is dimensional rather than flat, incorporating the polarities through expression and experience for the purpose of returning to balance and adventuring forth again. The practice of discernment is an inclusive nuance of self-contemplation of experience for the purpose of gaining wisdom and moving on into further expansion. A wise practice to apply frequently. When the ending of the millennium does occur, it does not do this on the date of your calendar. The cycles are not required to follow your calendar of the seasons. The basis of the cycles is not from the Earth perspective, but from what you call the zodiac as Earth passes from one influence of the 12 aspects of experience to the next. The starting place of each planet's trip through these influences does not follow the conclusions drawn by astrologers, but is determined by the mathematical equation of the solar system as it synchronizes with the master equation of the galaxy. It may then be assumed that the true ending of the millennium cycle is unknown, other than in a general sense, and it is close to your calculated time, give or take a few months. The cycles shift at higher levels as the heavenly bodies, observable in the night sky, which is nearly impossible because of artificial lighting, all moving in cycles reaching points for repetition to begin. This indicates ending and beginning within the conceptualization of finite thinking that is confined to the lower realms of dimensional experience. Each cycle may be thought as a portion of a breathing process allowing for a rest period or a time span at the zero point of balance before the shift. The zero, rest point, is the point at which each manifested creation partakes of an energy feeding process or gathering of new energy before it moves into the new cycle. It is this available energy that the devious ones plan to utilize combining it with the separated soul energy they plan to gather. They perceive this will supply an additional over-unity boost to bring about their plan shift from positive to negative. They also perceive that the control they are exerting will be accepted as the balance necessary for the energy transfer to occur at the resting point of the cycle shift. Magicians assume that their tricks are accepted as real by observers caught up in the process. Unfortunately for them, they are the ones caught up in their own deception. The Creator and the creation do not observe darkness of deception, for all thoughts and plans are known. Glaring reasons that humanity as it now experiences cannot in this moment exist in the higher dimensions are that thoughts and emotions are available to be read by all. Deception is impossible because intentions are fully known. This brings personal responsibility as a basis for higher dimensional experience into the light of logical understanding. Individuals sharing the same dimensional experience screen out inharmonious thought to allow balanced group experience. Focused thoughts are known and then what you call mental telepathy eliminates the need to slow the vibratory rate to vocalize thoughts. Since all at this level are consciously aware that their shared intention is participating in the return trip to the source of their own creation, the transition is not fraught with difficulty. Are there deviations? of course, but normally these are worked through in a supportive environment. It is rare that an individual must be returned to a lower dimension. As you begin to understand a larger picture of this point in the history of your planet and the segment of humanity that now resides on it, you can pinpoint your own experience within the scenario. If indeed you are a volunteer who has placed itself in lower dimensional experience in order to assist individuals trapped there, 
then it hardly seems fair that you must be bound by the confines of that dimension. Unfortunately, that's how it works. However, it was understood when you volunteered to do this, there would be a point that you would be fully reminded of who and what you are and of the agreement you made. In other words, you were promised a wake-up call. This is your wake-up call. Now that this information has begun to be absorbed into your consciousness and the subconscious levels of your awareness are rearranging to allow an attitude adjustment, a new focus is developing. The world you observe is changing before your eyes. There are three levels of awareness developing. The facade is presented to you, the activities of the magicians, and the refocusing of the mass consciousness of the planet's inhabitants. The first two layers of simultaneous awareness were present within your psyche, but were blurry and distorted. Examining them in some detail has allowed clarity and understanding. Adding the third brings forth the realization that you are indeed standing on the first rock of the project's planned diversion. Now it is decision time. Do you participate and continue in sharing a clear picture of the movie in progress all around you? This is a scenario rather than a scene. It is a motion all around you with all three activities interacting on the same stage all within depth, width, and height. It goes without saying that the project is the least focused of the activities as yet. That is your job. The basic job description is present within these messages. The framework is there. It is your personal responsibility to flesh out the job. The free will aspect is the ball in your court. Whether you pick it up or walk away is your choice. Our part to play within this drama, tragedy, or love story, your choice, is to act as the producer of this production. The writing, directing, and acting are your contributions. The producer provides the financing and the decisions as to whether the proposed script is something the backers, the investors, will approve. If script writers do not bring a proposed scenario to the producers, the producers may decide a certain thing would be saleable and solicit writers to contribute outlines. Since there have been no new paradigm novels, the theater owner has instructed this producer to solicit new paradigm outlines, beginning with a statement of purpose setting the theme. This is your invitation to participate. Since this is a Cecil B. DeMille type production, collaboration is recommended. The analogies used are not meant to make light of the situation, but to instill understanding at subconscious levels of your awareness. Pictures are easily assimilated in clarity. Words are filtered through a myriad of individual past experiences, attitudes, opinions, and all the programming each of you carries through the deliberate indoctrination you have received. Movies and television have been their tools of deception. However, the pictures that are brought forth by the imagination are far more powerful. For example, in your not-too-distant past, there was storytelling of myths and legend that invoked imagination. The current cartoons for children and movies have been provided to repress the inner imagination and stifle the creative instinct. Pictures program the subconscious. Pictures focused with the intent of reprogramming the subconscious accomplish this quickly. Purposeful intent supported by resolve is focus. The planet and humanity continue to cry out for an end to this scenario, but only humanity can bring the end through the creation of a new plot, a new script, and a new play. Free will allows humanity the choice to continue the present movie or simply have the stage revolve to the next production. However, there must be a new set or a scene on that stage so that audience participation can be invited to create this play of plays for the planet as a whole. What more can be done is now out of our hands. The wake-up calling is up to each of you as this message comes into your experience. Who is it that you know in your heart would resonate with the challenge focused through it? Will you dedicate yourself to this critical cause? Will you read, listen, and study the information with the intention of allowing its message to fill the void that resonates within you because of the deceptions of the dark magicians? When you think or speak the small prayer, I'm a human becoming, help me become, ask for guidance through your feelings that you may know. You are calling forth the vibratory connection to your source, the cause of your life experience here and now. Lines of communication open and seeming miracles begin to happen through coincidence and synchronicities. Most of all, a calm and peaceful attitude becomes prevalent in your experience. Your countenance changes and you know who you are, why you are here and what is to be done in each moment. 
You have a purpose, a mission, and there is hope for this planet after all. In the times that come, those of you who make this choice to become part of the holistic transformation of this planet and its inhabitants will lead the way to the transformation of yourselves. Mankind is inspired by example, not by words, written or spoken. Will you be as famous as Mother Teresa? No, indeed. Your example will be one of living the life of purposeful focus. Each day your intent is to be a human becoming for the purpose of mankind becoming and the planet becoming. This commitment in unison will bring forth an aura of magnetism that will reflect in all aspects of your experience. Will it make you a millionaire? Probably not. Because your focus is to participate in the larger creative flow into an experience that will have parameters that are yet unknown. The basic concept on which all higher dimensions are based is realized in the understanding that the pivot point to upliftment into evolving consciousness is the unified focus of returning to the level of creator. The one-upmanship of accumulating and maintaining material wealth is a moot point. During the period of chaos facilitating the transition, those with intent to assist in the birthing of the new paradigm rather than the maintenance of values to be transcended, will be assisted in having available what is needed to superintend facets of organization that are necessary. These will not be in the focus of leadership, but of setting the ideal or archetype of cooperation. Once before, a question was asked for your contemplation. You were asked if you could conceptualize a system in which there were no levels of leadership or hierarchy because they were unnecessary. Unity of focus based on personal responsibility to fulfill harmonious, shared goals of becoming through individual experience sets up a cooperative environment. Cooperation replaces competition, and fear is no longer present. The accumulation of wealth is motivated by the desire for protection, which is based in fear of what the future may hold and fed by the empowered ego through competition. He who dies with the most toys wins is an apt illustration of this imbalance. It's easier for a loaded camel to go through the eye of a needle, a cultural reference to a small people gate in a town or a house compound, than for a rich man to enter heaven, a state of contentment. This is true not because of the material things that are accumulated, but because of the basic attitudes that motivate him or her. Retirement funds are necessary because these same attitudes and beliefs bring on disease and degeneration of the body, illustrating the basic lack of trust in the Creator's flow that birthed you into this life experience. In a nutshell, the moment you are born, you are taught to begin swimming upstream against the flow of creative expansion. It's now time that you climb out on a rock, take a good look around, and then begin swimming with the expansive flow. It is so much easier and enjoyable. Swimming with the flow allows the focus of becoming to be thought acting within and upon itself. The resulting harmonious experience is that of being wholly supported in that quest. To accomplish this with an environment of humanity swimming in the opposite direction is impossible unless it is accomplished within a cooperating group that is literally out of that flow. Pulling oneself out of that flow, up on the rock, carefully perceiving the situation, and making the decision to enter the greater flow of the galaxy that is moving within creative expansiveness brings you to a level out of that struggling mass. Once the initial group begins this action by free will choice, many will join in increasing numbers and a new flow is formed joining the galactic flow. As those of the masses literally wearing themselves out by spending their creative energy within the struggle, observe your life moving smoothly and easily along within that flow, your mission of reversing the flow will be well underway. Your return ticket receives its first punch when you pull yourself out, stand on the rock and observe the situation from the level of accepting the situation as reality within the third dimensional realm of planet Earth. The next punch in your ticket is received when you make your choice commitment to bring forth a new paradigm of experience. The next is received when you begin the move within your consciousness and change your life expression through thought and action in harmony with your commitment to bring forth this new paradigm of experience with the inhabitants and the planet. You will know the purpose of your incarnation at the fully conscious level and the empty wandering will cease. You will then live in fulfillment of your purpose. 
To choose otherwise is tearing up your ticket. Can you get a new one? Later, maybe. But you will have missed your intended purpose and your intended opportunity. Reread, contemplate, pray, and decide. Free will is your privilege and your responsibility. Use it in wisdom. Dear Messengers, now that the handbook is complete, it's time that we turn the intention of the flow of the information towards the next phase to follow. As the momentum begins to grow, not so much at the actual manifestation level, as within the intentions to participate, the idea dawns that a crisis point exists. Our pebble in the pond of Matt's consciousness that no doubt seems ever so tiny to you is indeed powerful. The shift in perception is the most important beginning point possible. This bypasses the negative emotions of anger and the desire to retaliate. Your Bible states, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. This is total untruth. But it does contain the advice to leave the law of attraction to its natural action. Your must understood karmic law, as quoted when there is the desire for someone to get their just due, is indeed a distorted reference to the law of attraction. When quoting it in judgment, it applies in that instant also. Judge not, lest you be judged. The law of allowance would be wisely used instead, as in, I am a human becoming, help me become, or they are humans becoming, help them to become, or he or she is a human becoming, help he or she to become. Indeed, this prayer for others is sharing the gift of grace and is allowance indeed. This introduces the next level in the shift of human consciousness, beyond self, to include others through allowance, thereby transcending the need to control. It is important when working within the focus intended to be inclusive of the mass consciousness of the entire planet to forego the desire to quote rules and regulations. These do not sell well, especially with the diversity of understandings within the consciousness of six billion beings. Back to the basic of basics in simple language that is translatable with as little distortion as possible is most logical. KISS is indeed the rule. Acronyms are interesting shortcuts to recognition. Perhaps we could invent AIAB for attraction, intention, allowance, and balance, or FSTF for the first, second, third, and fourth. In order to cross language, culture, and religious barriers, simple applications must teach the basic laws without formalities. They must be practically applicable in all life situations and bring forth the desired shift in perspective that translates into changes of attitudes and consciousness. It is possible to do this with a few simple words that include AIAB. This seems paradoxical in a world of overwhelming numbers of communications literally moving faster than the speed of light. Of course, overwhelming is the key. The paradox includes the haves who long for greater simplicity and the have-nots who long for greater complexity. The inner void remains at all points on the scale of human experience on this planet, except for those who are now aware of the creation of the new paradigm. It is a first instinct when encountering these messages for individuals to want to rush to the mission before study and contemplation brings forth the necessary, fundamental, basic changes in consciousness that allows for synchronistic encounters with people and information to bring into their awareness what their part is. For multitudes, the change in perspective and attitude through the use of the simple prayer is all that is required. These will reap the miracles of a richer life experience. In the midst of chaos, through their focus on the intent within the wave of new consciousness, spreading the message of the word, and applying the basis in their daily lives is the most important mission of all. If applying these is not done at the fundamental levels of human experience, then all the messages are to no avail whatever. These are the ripples. What good are the pebbles if the pond remains static? The victim consciousness must be transcended so that humanity can take back its power. When you share the gift of this information, you must be able to supply feedback to those who receive these messages and reply in a reactive mode. The pin-up desire for change is released and direction needs to be given to those who rush to you for guidance. Personal responsibility is another way of saying, take your power and use it with intentional focus to bring balance. The balanced state of experience is necessary to be functioning part of the ground team. Rereading, studying, contemplating, 
and applying what is within the messages through personal experience will prove the validity of the information and bring forth balance within chaos. The ground team has space for those who are awake, aware, committed, focused, and balanced. This brings forth the ability to act rather than react. If it is not yet time for individuals to act, then encourage them to continue to study, share the message, and be within the rippling effect while they wait patiently. This is the space you must occupy to be functional and ready, is putting oil in your lamp so that it may be lit in the moment of opportunity. So become this consciousness.